Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade five in module four, we are working on lesson number three. And in lesson number three, we're doing some of the same work we've been doing in the lesson so far, which is that we are interpreting fractions as division. And so we've got a couple of different ways that we're doing that today. One is sort of a chart, and one is a word problem. But neither one of us should give us too much trouble. And hopefully, after watching the video, you'll be ready to go with your homework. Let's take a look at problem number one. Problem number one asks us to do the following. It asks us to fill in the chart. Sorry, fill in the chart. The first one is done for you. Um, and let's take a look at what they did in 1A. Um, that way it'll help, it'll help us when we start working together on 1C. Um, let's take a look at 1A. So let's see, it looks like we've got to, we've got to express, oops, we've got to express our uh, result here in a variety of forms. We have to use the division expression, 4 divided by 3. We have to use the unit form expression, and they have, let's see, 12 thirds divided by 3. Uh, okay, they've got an improper fraction, so that's 4 thirds. Oh, right, the numerator is greater than the denominator, so that's an improper fraction. Oh, then they express it as a mixed number, because we know that 4 thirds is the same as 1 and 1 third. And then they have a standard algorithm. Interesting. Um, we would have often expressed this before as like one remainder one, but I notice here that they expressed it as one and one third, so they had a remaining third left. The remainder is one out of three or one third. And then they check the work by saying, oh, what if we did three copies of our answer? Three copies of one and one third. They do it as repeated addition, one and one third plus one and one third plus one and one third. And then, oh, and then they do the check to make sure that they recreate the whole. The whole is four in this case, and that means that they've done the check. Okay, so I think if we look at that model for how they've done things here in 1A, maybe we can go ahead and fill in some of the blanks for 1C. So let's see, 1C is a little difficult, so they only provide this information. Let's see. Now, I have to remember, is this 2 divided by 7 or 7 divided by 2? Because it makes a difference, right? Let's see. The whole, right, ah, the whole is here, 7 divided into 2 equal parts. So 7 divided by 2. So that helps me out, because that means I can maybe move over here and say, okay, well, this is 7 divided by 2. Wow, I've done my 7 so sloppily you can't read it. Let me try a third time. 7 divided by 2. Awesome. 7 divided by 2. And Well, you know, while we're at it, I'm noticing that improper fraction is going to be really easy to draw right now. 7 divided by 2. And if I give my improper fraction, let's see, how many holes are there in 7 divided by 2? Let's see, 2, 4, 6. I think there's three holes, and that leaves one more half left over. Is that right? Let's see, 2, 4, 6, 7 halves. Yep, 3 and 1 half would be my, uh, my mixed number. So now let's see, the trickier ones, I think, in my view, are this unit form one and the standard algorithm in check. So let's see, how do we do this? Um, let's see, this, this 7 divided by 2 is the same as how many halves divided by 2? Well, I think what they're saying is how many halves are there in 7 holes? Well, let's see, there'd be 2 halves in each hole, so that would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 halves, I think, right? 14 halves, does that make sense? If we had 7 pizzas, we could also say we had 14 halves of a pizza. Oh, that would work, yeah. So 14 halves minus 2 is how many halves? Well, 14 divided by 2 is 7. 7 halves. Hey, 7 halves. I think that works because I'm noticing that 7 halves in unit form is the same as here. 7 halves, right? I think we're ready to go ahead and do our standard algorithm, which is the part over here. Let's see. How many groups of 2 can we make out of 7? Well, let's see. We can make 1, 2, 3 groups. Three groups of two would mean that we've used up six of our seven, and that would give us a remainder of one. But I'm noticing something, which is that when we did our standard algorithm division here, they expressed that remainder in fractional form, in fractional units, right? So that would be three and one half, right? One remainder, um, and the remaining part is one half. And then they did the check on the side, which is they said, well, let's see, what if we made... Uh, in this case, three copies of one and one third. Well, in this, our case, we're going to make two copies of three and one half. So that's two copies of three and one half is the same as, well, that's repeated addition. So that's three and one half plus three and one half. Let's go ahead and add three and one half plus three and one half. Let's see, we'll add the whole parts together. That's three plus three is six. And then we've got the fractional parts, one half plus one half, it's two halves, two halves. Oh, that's another whole. That's the same as six plus one, 
or 7. And hey, that checks out, right? We've recreated the hole. 7 was our original hole, and so I think we've checked our answer successfully. So let's go left to right and see if we've got this right. We've got We've expressed 7 divided by 2 this way as a division expression. We've expressed it in unit form. We've expressed 7 as the same as 14 halves divided by 2 is 7 halves. We've expressed 7 halves this way as an improper fraction. 7 divided by 2 is 7 halves. We've expressed that as a mixed number. 7 halves is the same as 3 wholes and 1 half. And we've expressed it with our standard algorithm, our, our sort of division problem here, and then our double check problem where we take our, um, our eventual quotient and we are able to recreate our whole through repeated addition or multiplication. Awesome, I'm pretty happy with our ability to do that chart. And you've got a couple more problems then to do, perhaps um, B and maybe D. Let's take a look at one problem for tonight's homework. Uh, we're gonna use our read, draw, and write strategy for word problems, so let's go ahead and do the reading part. Polly buys 14 cupcakes for a party. The bakery puts them into boxes that hold four cupcakes each. How many boxes will be needed for Polly to bring all the cupcakes to the party? Explain how you know. And then eventually, we'll do this later, if the bakery completely fills as many boxes as possible, what fraction of the last box is empty? How many more cupcakes are needed to fill this box? Okay, so this is a pretty good real world problem, as long as we're buying 14 cupcakes. Uh, let's see, um, how are we going to draw this problem? Hmm. Well, let's see. I we, there are a lot of different ways that we could draw this problem. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna say, what if we had 14 cupcakes all lined up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen cupcakes. Okay, there we are. Fourteen cupcakes on the counter. And let's see. The bakery puts them into boxes that hold four cupcakes each. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put these into a box. There. There's one box, there's two boxes, there's three boxes, and there's four boxes. You know what? I'm going to do this a little more accurately, right? That box would have held four. So that's 14 cupcakes put into boxes. How many boxes will be needed for Polly to bring all the cupcakes to the party? Well, let's see. One, two, three, four. Four. Um, she needs... Four boxes. Explain how you know. Well, I don't know. The drawing kind of explains how I know. Um, three boxes only fit 12 cupcakes. There, how's that for an explanation? I think that plus our drawing does a good job. We've done redraw and write for this problem. Let's see if we can do it for the next part. So if the bakery fill, completely fills as many boxes as possible, what fraction of the last box is empty? Oh, well, we can just go back to our drawing here. Let's see. So they filled, they filled, they filled, and then they tried to fill this last one. Let's see. What part of this box is empty? Well, let's see. Um, there could have been a cupcake here, but there wasn't, and there could have been a cupcake here. So it looks like two-fourths of the box is empty, or one-half. Either We could say either way. Let's see. Um, I'm going to say two-fourths. two-fourths of the last box is empty. I'm going to say this is also, oops, also the same as one-half. Okay, and how many more cupcakes were needed to fill the box? Oh, that's easy, right? We could have put, um, we could have put two more in here. I'm going to put them in red. We could have put Two more cupcakes in there to still fill it up, right? Um, so let's see. Uh, how many more cupcakes? Two more cupcakes are needed to fill that fourth box. Awesome. Does that make sense to our diagram, right? We filled up one, two, three three boxes. In that fourth box, we only filled two of the spots that left either two-fourths or one-half. Two-fourths is equivalent to one-half, right, uh, of that last box empty. And if we wanted to know how many more cupcakes were needed to fill that in, two more cupcakes would have needed. Two more cupcakes are needed to fill that fourth box. Awesome. I think we've got it. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Good luck on your homework. Bye-bye.